From Brock Media, this is Never Told. I'm the producer, Nicole Davis. Each week, we'll be sharing an original story from a different writer, told in their own voice. This week, we're pleased to present Homeward Bound, written and performed by Thaddea Graham. Thaddea is an actor from Northern Ireland who trained at Arts Ed in London before securing a role in Sky One's Curfew. She had her first leading role in Netflix's The Irregulars and then BBC Three's Wreck, of which she is currently filming the second season. She will next start in the fourth series of Netflix's Sex Education. Whilst not on screen, Thaddea writes and performs her own music, singing and playing guitar and piano, and is now turning her hand to writing. She's currently working on her first play and in development for her first TV show. I'll be back towards the end to chat with Thaddea about how this story was formed and fine-tuned, but for now, here she is reading, playing and singing Homeward Bound. I believe it is a great privilege to have my hometown be a place that is steeped in folklore and music. To grow up in a land where stories are often gifted through lilting rhymes and rhythms, buried deep in our bones and passed along from generation to generation. Not always able to distinguish fact from fiction and not always needing to, nor wanting to. I'm an actor and I'm a musician. Job and that's my life. Stories set to music that stand the test of time and remain in this world long after any of us move on. They are shared like the news of a newborn baby, savoured like the first sip of a settled Guinness. You might not remember every single word to every single song, but you'll hum along to the tune and you'll remember how they made you feel. You'll be transported back to a moment in time to the memory that you've attached to it. The music and the story married together like soulmates. My name is Thaddea and I'm an actor. Although it's my job to tap into the emotion and heartbeat of a character, I find it quite difficult sometimes to articulate my own feelings out loud. I still much prefer to sing them, to write them into songs that I can share and hide behind. I haven't seen you in quite some time I think five years have gone by Since I last saw you Since I last called you Lots has happened since we last met You've got two gorgeous kids with bright eyes Who just make my heart melt You're living my dream And it seems to me That no matter how long has passed And no matter what comes and goes The way you make me feel so seen and safe is the one thing that'll never ever change I've travelled the world these past few years and my work keeps me from settling down No constant address for me to be found and I find myself missing this little old time And as I hit the M5 towards your house I feel myself starting to forget about All of the stress and the expectations All of the press and the numbers and fake shit And no matter how far I go And no matter what I do The world can keep their opinions on me I know a bungalow down by the sea Where I can go and just be whatever I want to be Where I can go and I feel completely and utterly free Born in China, adopted and then raised in County Down 
I've been fortunate to have been influenced greatly by the kindness of strangers my entire life. Some of those strangers stay just that, strangers. People I meet fleetingly, but who leave a lasting impression. Others who have got to know and are now some of my dearest friends. I believe I am who I am today because of what they've shared with me. Their guidance and our shared experience and discoveries together helping me carve out the person that I want to be. One of those people is a woman called Elspeth who led our dialect sessions at drama school. One day in class, we each recorded ourselves talking and then listened back to them. We each recorded ourselves talking and then listened back to them. She asked us to comment on what we heard and I said that I speak too fast, that my accent is too thick and I knew that I'd need to work on that to work in this industry. I knew that nobody wanted to hear my accent, that it wouldn't be understood and I expected her to agree. I thought that was the point of these sessions, to whip us into more eloquent, understandable shape. But she nipped that train of thought right in the bud and told me there was absolutely nothing wrong with my accent, and in turn, my voice. So my vowels are a bit different. What of it? Elspeth said, Thaddy, people just have lazy ears. They're not used to your accent, so they have to work a bit harder. That's nothing to apologise for. To hear her say that with such conviction but also with such ease. Like, she just told me that Wednesday comes after Tuesday and shouldn't have really know that by now. Was monumental. And I think she touched on something far bigger than just my vowel sounds. Growing up, I found it a rarity to hear a Northern Irish accent on mainstream media. And if I did, I used to cringe at it because the associations and stereotypes were often crude. Even today, when people hear my accent, they ask me about the Troubles. The 30-year struggle for peace that, although in the textbooks, ended in 1998, arguably has left a long-lasting mark on this country and how we are viewed by the wider world. I'm seeing some shit on my TV screen Trying to decipher what the hell it all means All these kids are running around Setting fire to the time Oh, here we go again. My generation up and left this place. So who is there to try and make a change? Holding the opposite opinion can be a scary place to sit. But if a conversation's hard, you not think it's worth having it. And I know that I'm lucky to be born around the time of 98. But you're either daft or ignorant. If you think that we're past all that hit, I'm just so sick and I am tired of history playing on repeat. All these headlines are really fucking troubling. How do you scream if you can't use your voice? Too scared to speak, just don't make any noise. Fly low under the radar. Don't cause any fuss and pray to God that no one asks you where about you're from. Well, violence in culture and rioting in love. And there are better ways to sort this out in 2021. And I know that pain can make you blind and grief can make you mad. And I know that you look at me and you think, well, how could she possibly understand when she was lucky? be born around the time of 98 but i'd be daft or ignorant to think that we're past all that hate i'm just so sick and i'm tired of history playing on repeat all these headlines are really fucking troubling The Troubles bred a culture of silence and shame, of trepidation and tiptoeing around conversations, afraid of speaking out of turn, afraid of being seen as one thing or the other, 
afraid of bringing any harm to your family or loved ones. Not knowing where to turn, who to trust. And it is appalling to think about how we are so used to the phrase bomb scare. How numb we are to seeing riots on the local news. How easily we accept these things to be, oh, it's just the way it is here. Although times have changed and we've come leaps and bounds, there is still that slight hesitation to speak and fear of being heard. Connecting to the voice I hold naturally and fully unlocking its power holds massive influence over what I do for a living. And when I meet a writer or director for a new show, I will always ask if I can use my own accent. It may not be right for the character or the world that we're building, and that's fine, but I'll always ask the question. I want to put our accent out there amongst the others and show the world that we are more than just our history. Not to neglect it or forget it or take away from the weight of what it was, but to learn from the past and hopefully let it influence our next steps for the better. To show people at home and further afield that we are allowed to take up space. To make room for them to come and join those of us fortunate enough to already be in this industry and to not have to pretend to be something else to fit in or to use someone else's voice. Since that conversation in that dialect session, which in reality probably lasted about five minutes, I've doubled down and allowed my accent to be what it is. I refuse to go how now brown cow instead of how now brown cow. I refuse to apologise for it. If anything, my accent's only gotten stronger. So, if you can't understand what I'm saying, first of all, turn your ears up. And secondly, go and find Elspeth. Take it up with her. There's a world in which I wasn't to exist And there's a world in which I'd have grown up somewhere I just didn't fit But I was dealt a lucky hand and given a second chance at life And now I find myself somewhere that I belong And in this life I lead I'm fortunate to find People who have shared their hearts and who have given little bits of mine And they have all shared with me something money cannot buy Support and wisdom, patience and their time As I look back on my life, having just turned 24 I think of all those dreams I've chased and how there's so many more Places that I want to see and things I want to try None of it would have been possible that the kindness of strangers get me by. I believe that one of the greatest gifts we as human beings possess is the ability to feel. And I think that I am someone who feels extremely deeply. It's a blessing and a curse because it means that the highs can be very high, but it also means the lows can be very, very low which I think goes hand in hand with how my industry works. It can be brilliant, but it can be brutal. You'll be flying high, creating something with hundreds of people you've come to be awful fond of, spending every day surrounded by that drive and curiosity, and then suddenly be sat alone in your flat, questioning your entire existence and wondering what the hell is going on, wondering if you're good enough, Wondering if you're strong enough. Wondering if you're cut out for it at all. The time that self-doubt gets the loudest is when I feel silenced either by the situation or by myself being cautious. I have experienced moments of deep loneliness and frustration at not being able to fight back in the way I wanted to. Knowing that I and my voice were not big enough to make any dent in the mindsets of those with far more power than I or not being able to change the systematic problems of our industry. There have been times where on paper things have been going exceptionally well, living the dream, so grateful and fortunate to be doing what I was doing, knowing I was one of the lucky ones, but find the day-to-day experience falling short. The pressure, the stress, the doubt and the loneliness taking over. I don't often find that I can say exactly what I want to say in the moment. As actors, we are our brand and you have to protect that. So I'm constantly wary of who I say what to and when. Perhaps also because of where I've come from, it weighs even heavier. 
because of my personal stubbornness to not fall back into that trap of verbally tiptoeing around any situation. I tried to stand my ground and not waver in what I believe to be the right thing to do, which, as a woman of colour, who has a fear of causing too much of a fuss or taking up too much space, can be quite the battle. Mostly with myself. It all feels very fragile, like an extremely delicate piece of glass, sculpted carefully with love and passion, balanced precariously on the edge of a cliff that at any moment could be shattered by too strong of a gust of wind. An irreplaceable image that everyone will remember for the way that it fell and smashed into a million little pieces and made an awful mess rather than the way that it held itself so strongly and navigated the elements for so long. Learning how to compromise, but not negate your own needs or accept things for the way they are without letting people walk all over you is a very tricky thing to do. It's something I'm still figuring out. I feel a lot of pressure to be a spokesperson for so many aspects of my life and who I am, and I'm not always ready to do that. It feels like there's a lot of eyes on you, waiting for you to stumble. And if you do, they'll see that as a way to never take a chance on someone who looks or sounds like me again. The way that I process that pressure and disperse the weight of having to get things right all the time is to put it into songs. To put my entire weight behind my voice in a way that won't hurt myself or those around me. Diffusing it with fiction, grounding it with truth, mixing it all up and letting it meld together like a tie-dye jumper where you can't quite tell where one colour starts and another begins. I need music in the same way I need oxygen or to eat a good meal or to stay hydrated. It's a form of self-care, of staying alive, of feeling connected and less alone. Sitting up in the dead of night in a room that's far from home Ain't many people I know here Guess that's why I feel so alone When I am asked How I find it all so far I won't tell you of the lonesome evenings That are weighing on my heart No, I'll tell you about the sights that I've seen The people that I've met I'll tell you about shafting in the sunshine And how it can rain like hell I'll tell you about the time we worked till sunrise How we shot in sacred halls Cause no one really wants to hear the fortunate Complain about the truth of it all Out of my depth and I am drowning in all this guilt I have surrounded my success with Well, you said that hurts nobody but yourself And it's no good for your mental health So take that guilt and manifest it into something positive You have the power to control everything that's coming with this role if it gets too much, then we can always walk away from it But you told me time and time before How you want to use all this for something more So why are the chances here? So what are you so scared for? Just believe Take a leap Dictate who you will be. I write songs like most people write diaries and find it very therapeutic and cathartic to get lost in recording and editing, fine tuning harmonies, writing counter melodies, geeking out about the theory of composition. I can see exactly where I was in my life when I look back through the archives. And it's often bittersweet, like going back to your childhood bedroom or pouring through a scrapbook of photos from when you were little, your heart filling with fondness for the younger version of yourself. 
I hear someone trying their best to digest and process life in the only way they really know how. And I listen with a wry smile because I hold the knowledge of what's coming next for her. I know the surprises that are waiting right around the corner. I don't know quite how quickly or far out this wheel will take us tonight. But I know the tide is turning Cause I can feel the water yearning To pull me back into her arms And I'll safely surrender to her Because I know That like the vast and dense ocean We're all constantly in motion we must dive into the darkness of time And let go of all control, my friends Cause you will be brought back again To the grind beneath your feet And you will see Just how quickly tides can turn And you will feel Just how deeply you can yearn So surrender I will never stop going all in, 100% for the things and people I believe in. Even if it means that the fall will be mighty, I'd much rather fall, scrape my knee, and have a story to tell from the scar that it leaves than stay protected in bubble wrap for the rest of my life. As much as I know my parents would love for me to stay right where I am with them in the family home forever and ever, amen, they have always selflessly nudged me towards the door, always encouraged me to go out and explore the world, to go on adventures and make up my own mind about what lies out there. I've always felt like a massive homebird, but have a huge appetite for exploration and adventure. I've come to learn that those two things can coexist, that I can return home without regressing, that I can grow and not change. I can go to the other side of the world without ever leaving home in my heart. The folklore and music from my adopted home is so steeped in my bones it helps me stand tall like the giants that once roamed our Emerald Isle. Empowering me to take up space and add to our collection of stories, some of them told through rhythms and rhymes. I want to keep experiencing new things and making mistakes and feel privileged to be surrounded by people who encourage me to make them. Who encourage me to love openly, dream wildly, live boldly. Those are the people that I carry with me every single day and who have influenced the way I sound. The phrases I use, my colloquialisms, speech patterns, articulation, all of it culminating to create my voice an audible history of who I am and where I'm from. I'm living my life out of a suitcase I'm living my life on the railroad tracks From the northern towns to the southwest valleys I think it's time that I went back Oh, I'm homeward bound I'm going home to see my mother Going home to see my dad. I'm homeward bound to the lock this shit. <laughs> okay, I'll try again. I'm living my life out of a suitcase. I'm living my life on the railroad track. Northern towns to the southwest valleys. I think it's time that I went back. Oh, I'm homeward bound. I'm going home to see my mother. I'm homeward bound. I'm going home to see my dad. I'm homeward bound to the lock that shimmers in the moonlight. Oh, I'm homeward bound tonight. I'm an 
actor and I'm a musician. That's my job and that's my life. It's an honor to earn those two titles. And wear them both with pride. And I hope one day to be a mother. I wanna be somebody's wife. I know I'll always be a daughter I just pray to God that I do it right Oh, I'm homeward bound I'm going home to see my family I'm homeward bound To the children running free I'm homeward bound To a house that's full of laughter And love Surrounding me, <laughs> kind of fucked it at the end. <laughs> what kind of an ending do you want? Hi, Thalia. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for your story and your songs in Thank Homeward you. Bound. I'm going to start off this debrief by asking a question that we're posing to all of our writers and contributors for this series, which is that you were given a provocation, which was to talk about something, articulate something that maybe you'd never told anyone before in whatever form that might take. I'm wondering what your initial reaction to that provocation was and, and how you landed on telling this particular story. I think it was pure panic. <laughs> it was called Never Told and I rang my agent going, but I, I say everything. I haven't I haven't not told anyone something. And she's like, okay, Thads, maybe not, maybe don't take it so literally. <laughs> maybe you could find something that you haven't told in a certain way. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I think it was, it was fear mostly. And then imposter syndrome of, well, I've never written anything. Nothing like this anyway. I've written songs, but that's not, they don't count. So I kind of felt like I wasn't the right person. I just didn't want to get it wrong. So I think it was a lot of fear, but that's mostly how I react to anything that's offered <laughs> or any any opportunity that comes in. It's, oh God, am I good enough? But then it feels like that's what you used to put in the yeah. story. Like it became the story of how you have fought against this idea that you're not good enough. Yeah. I suppose in the same way that I find the story, I, I talk about finding my voice in it. It's the same way I find how to create this and how to write Homeward Bound and it was so helpful to work with you and to hear to be able to say something and go well here's all the feelings I have (laughs) here's all the real life stuff and then to have your input and for you to take it away from being so like I've just exposed myself which was so amazing to see how you do that and I think just learning from you as well. It's such an incredible opportunity. And so the whole thing's been really fun. I'd love to know, because you talk about songwriting as like writing diaries. And because you said you hadn't done this kind of writing before, did you approach it in the same way? Like you were just going to do like a vomit draft and like get all your feelings onto the page and then, you know, figure out what it was once you'd done that? I think one of our first Zoom meetings, I told you the story about Finn McCool. He was a giant back in the day. And he used to... There's this whole story about how he built the Giants Causeway and da 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 da. And we talked about that. And you said, well, that that's quite a good story. And so we, we had a version where I really focused on like the Giants in Ireland and then the Giants in my life. And the beautiful thing about the Finn McCool story is that he gets into this trouble and rather than use his brute strength of a giant to fight back, it's his wife's quick thinking and, and brains and smart. Smartness is not a word. Her wiles or her, or her yes. intelligence. Yes. <laughs> See, this is exactly how the, the sessions go. I loved all of that. And we also loved it being quite about like powerful women. And that's certainly where I get a lot of my strength from. So we'd started there, but then it felt a little bit forced. It didn't feel quite right. And I felt like because Finn McCool, that story of Northern Ireland and the Giants Causeway has been told so many times, it didn't fit the brief. Then I sent you the song that I'd written about Finn McCool. And then I started thinking about how to marry music with dialogue and then it just went on its own journey. We will definitely come on to talk about the songs and especially how they wove themselves into the story. But I really love actually how you took that Fimical story and what giants are and then kind of turned it inwards and what it means to you to stand tall and take up space. And I'm, I'm wondering kind of when that intention maybe 
appeared to you and whether you feel like that you know is that a genuine feeling that you have where you now feel able to take up space and let your voice be your voice I think it was actually quite late on because we had a few drafts of the music and the dialogue together and then initially I was just putting in songs and then writing a little paragraph afterwards to reflect on what the song meant but also I really like the mythical elements of Irish folklore and it also gives you, a, a, me as a writer, a layer of protection. So we started leaning into the mythical so that the line between fact and fiction was blurred. And through that, I think then just looking at the, the paragraphs that I'd written, we started to figure out that a lot of it was about home and about my voice. And in, in a format like this, where it is all audio and it is so focused on that, especially with songwriting as well in there, and finding what your voice is as a musician and as a songwriter, I think it just came very naturally, very late on, but very naturally. As an actor, I started working professionally in like 2018. So I, I still feel very, very green. And I think at the start, you're just so grateful to do anything. You're so grateful that someone's even brought you in for an audition. And I still feel that. So I think there's always that conscious, oh, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to take up too much space, especially as a woman and as a woman of color. You don't want to rock the boat too much because it feels like it can be very quickly taken away from you. But I think you start to grow in confidence and you start to feel less like it's a fluke and that someone's done you a kind favour and they're just being nice. And that actually maybe you've brought me in because you, you think that I can do this. Maybe I think I can do this now. I think that's a journey that I'm just going on constantly. And But, but being surrounded by such good people who are, who are telling me that that is not, it's not that it's not valid, but it, it doesn't have to weigh as hard. And I can be a little bit more confident in the things I want to say and the things I want to do. And I think my agent is probably the biggest champion of that. And the person that I speak to every single day and who I work really closely with. Um, and she's been a massive empowerer of that. I want to follow that down the rabbit hole, the idea that most people know you as an actor and performer mm. and they will have probably seen you on the screen. And again, coming back to this idea that you're kind of new to writing. But what has that given you? And do you feel like that is something that you want to continue to do? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's given me such an appreciation of just how hard it is. I find the hardest part the drafts because they were not little notes, but they were notes that you think, okay, no, I understand why we need to do that. But it's so hard to let go of the thing that you've already made and to keep almost like nitpicking on one little section to get it right and fine tuning that, which always, well, in our case, always was the better option. But it's so tricky to go, oh God, okay, so just forget about that last version almost and rewrite. I find that so tricky, but really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the challenge because I usually get scripts and get told what to say and it's all there and it's done. And yeah, you can have conversations with writers, but you don't get the control. And I really love flexing that muscle. I definitely want to go on and write more. But surely some of that process applies to songwriting as well, like the nitpicking and the going back and, as you say, like fine-tuning melodies and kind of figuring out what it is. Is that how you approach each song that you write or are some kind of, again, vomit drafts, things that just come from a guttural place you have to let out that are kind of fully formed? Some of them, like Homeward Bound, I wrote right at the start of my professional career. I was going up to Manchester filming something, coming down to Cardiff, going back to London, flying to Northern Ireland. It was all over the place and it was so much fun, but I felt so unsettled because you're always on the move. And even as something as simple as like trying to sign up for a Tesco club card and needing the address to send the club card to, I was like, I don't, I don't know where to put it, which sounds so stupid, but it's like, oh, I really wish little things like that. I wish I had a permanent place that was mine. So I wrote that song and then it was just a word vomit and I've never touched it again since. It's always, it's just stayed as it is. But then something like Dive, where it's a little bit more produced and I've managed to play around with sounds on Logic. I use Logic Pro and a thing called Labs, which gives you like interesting sounds just through the keyboard. And then I've always been a massive sucker for like three part harmonies. I think growing up in school, we always used to sing three parters, maybe four parts. We'd have a soprano one, seconds, then altos, and then maybe an alto two. And I'm an alto three and three. I have a, that's my, my range is low. (laughs) So I've always had a fondness of that because I grew up with it. And I think storytelling in Ireland is very much closely woven into music. And it's just, it's just so much fun. And I think as soon as I started writing those natural kind of melodies and that natural folk sound came through, although my face is Asian, I sound very much 
like I'm from County Down. And it's in all of my mannerisms and how I am. And so I think it makes sense that that's how it sounds when, it, when I pick up a guitar. Yeah, I wondered what that experience was like for you, both reading the story out loud, but then, as you say, like performing the songs for an audience, you know, thinking obviously about the podcast audience down yeah. the line, but, uh, you know, the audience of three that were in the room kind of with you as that was happening. Did that sort of change anything for you? I'm not used to playing out loud to people, and I think I probably get stage fright. I, th- I think, which a lot of people would go, what do you mean? But I'm confident in my abilities. Well, not confident, but... I'm more confident in my abilities as an actor. I know where I'm meant to stand on set. I know how that works. I know how a day runs. I know what to do with sides or a a call sheet in front of an audience with a guitar. I'm like, "Uh, please don't hit it. (laughs) It also feels more vulnerable because it's your own. Like I say in the the podcast, I do write them like diaries. So it feels very exposing. And I definitely find sitting and recording the dialogue more of my comfort zone and getting notes from you. And it's like, well, I know how to do this bit. But even then, it's like my own words that I'm reading. Well, thank you. I hope this doesn't sound weird for exposing yourself. (laughs) And yeah, thank you for sharing these gorgeous songs with us. And this story that really affected me, actually, in, in the sense that you're right, that we don't often hear the Northern Irish accent allowed to be itself. And it, you know, made me question like, why not? And it was just very beautiful to hear you coming into your own throughout this story. So thank you so much, Thaddea. Thank you. This episode of Never Told was produced by me, Nicole Davis. Our executive producer is Sarah Brocklehurst. Our production assistant and assistant story editor is Amy Yeo. Our sound designer and mixer is Tom Wally. Our artwork is designed by Bette Norris. That's our show for today, and we'll be returning next week with a brand new story from Esther Smith. Listen to Never Told on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.